Hello, my mindful yogis. It's Mike. So this week I did a mini workshop around like knees in your yoga practice and knee pain and knee strength and knee alignment. And I'm going to do kind of hand in hand now a 60 minute journey into power sequence where I'm going to put a focus on the knees throughout the entire sequence. Okay. So I brought a couple of extra props. I have a bath towel rolled up. I have two blocks, hand towel. Um, if you don't have knee issues, you can just do this practice. It's going to be a normal practice. I'm just going to put a little bit more of a focus on cueing to the knees and um, hyperextension and, and uh, muscle engagement throughout the legs and stuff like that. So we will start in child's pose, which for me, um, it's my biggest issue. I have some old knee injuries on my left side, some um, meniscus tears and cartilage removal and osteoarthritis and Baker cysts and all kinds of good stuff. So deep knee bending for me is the worst thing. Like sitting back onto my heels is like the most uncomfortable position. So there's a couple options in child's pose. You can take the blanket, um, the towel into the back of your knees if you need that kind of support. I don't really need it. Um, but just not sitting as deep for me as all that it takes, okay? So again, whatever you need to support the knees, rolling up your mat a little bit if you've got really um, crunchy like kneecaps that don't feel good, and sitting back. So child's pose can almost turn into puppy pose, right? Like I said in that workshop, bring your knees up on a little bit higher. And sit back as deep as you need to and start to breathe here. Long breaths. Throughout the practice, like the main things we're focusing on here is engagement of the muscles in the legs. Avoiding hyperextension throughout the knees, throughout the joints. And really a focus on learning to modify poses that make your knees uncomfortable so that you can do them powerfully. Starting to build strength around your joints so that you feel stronger and more stable in all of your poses. Take a big breath in. Take a big breath out. Sit a little bit deeper if there's space for it, right? Don't ever force anything that hurts your joints. But challenge yourself to get nice and deep into your stretch. One more breath in. One more breath out. Tabletop, curl your toes under, lift your hips back, and really feel that engage through the legs, the core. Starting to get active through your foundation of your feet here, draw the inner ankles back, press the outer ankles down. So your feet are the access point right to your legs, the feet are the access point through the joints, the hips, the knees. So you want to be grounded and intentional through your feet. If your toes turn in too much or turn out too much, then you're going to end up getting you know, some weird sideways pressure on the joints, which you want to avoid. Breathe in. Breathe out. Just pedal out one knee and then the other. Kind of feel that out. And avoiding hyperextension, avoiding locking out of the knees, which might be second nature for a lot of you if you're watching this video on knee pain. Bring your feet together. Three-legged dog. So the bottom leg, soften that knee and then lift your right foot up. Bend your right knee. Open your hips. You want to avoid locking out the bottom leg in three-legged dog. Keep a micro bend in the knee. Press the foot. Inner ankle back. Outer ankle down. Activate the legs. Breathe in. Then switch sides. Right foot down. Left foot up. Intentionally set up the right foot. Micro bend the right knee. And then come up. Open your left side body. Check that your knee isn't locked on the right side. Check your elbows aren't locked, right? Like no joints are rigid in this practice. There's a fluidity to the body. Open up your hips more. Breathe in and step forward. Ragdoll at the top of your mat. Feet as wide as your hips, parallel with your feet. Yeah, grab the elbows or the biceps. Just let the upper body go. Micro bend the knees. Just check in your. Default might be something that locks out. On one side, I can't even hyperextend anymore because of my injuries, right? But be aware if that happens, soften through the knees. Draw your inner ankles back. Press your outer ankles down. Ground the mounds of your toes. The more you get dialed into your feet, the more stable and more strong your legs are going to feel. That's just in general, regardless of what your knees are doing in your practice. Take a breath in. 
fingertips to your mat, bring your feet back to touch. So big toes touching, heels just a little bit apart. That keeps the feet parallel, right? Come up to a flat back, long spine, micro bend the knees. And then fold, hug into your legs, tailbone lifts up. Extended mountain, press your feet down, lift up your fingertips. Hands to the center of your chest. Lift your inner kneecaps up to the ceiling. Wake up your legs. And gaze to your fingers. We'll start with one arm. Big breath in. Sweep your arms up to the ceiling. Fold forward. Hug your chest to your thighs. Micro bend your knees. Halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Plant your hands, step back to a high plank. Lower down low plank, keep the micro bend in the knees, or the knees can come to the ground if they need to, right? Upward facing dog, chest forward. Lift your kneecaps up, work the strength of your legs. Downward facing dog. And common misconception is that you have to be careful and not do work in your legs when you've got a knee injury, and it's like you just wanna do the work safely. Right, like getting every muscle of your leg working is powerful as long as your knee isn't hyperextended or compromised as far as alignment, right? You really want to work the muscles. That will relieve tension in the joint over time. Lift up, bend your knees, step to the top of your mat. Maybe hopping is not the best thing for your knees, right? Halfway lift, especially if you can't do it with low impact. Fold. Extended mountain, press down and reach up, lengthen your upper body, fold forward, keep the knees soft, halfway lift, shoulders back, belly strong, core engagement, high plank to low, option to step back onto your knees, lower down, upward facing dog, press the tops of your feet, lift your kneecaps and thighs, work the legs, downward facing dog, lead with your core and your tailbone. Inner ankles back, outer ankles down. Breathe in. Soften the joints. Strong core. Hug it in. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees. If you're gonna hop, you have to do it lightly. Don't thud, right? Like a light hop, land with some softness in the knees, halfway lift. Fold. One more, extended mountain, go up and back, keep that micro bend in the knees, fold forward, hug into your legs, halfway lift, strong core, high plank to low, keep your leg muscles pulling into the bones, upward facing dog, lift your kneecaps up off the floor, downward facing dog, kick your hips back, breathe in, breathe out, lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, Step forward, flat back, lengthen the spine, fold. I'm gonna come into chair and use a block if you've got one, or even a towel rolled up, yeah? Something between the thighs. You can do this with a bath towel. Just roll it up till it's, it's um, firm enough that you can squeeze your thigh muscles into it and then sit down. So what this is really gonna help to do is build strength in the leg muscles, okay? And bring awareness to this area of the body where you need to be active and, and engaged, right? So make sure that you never let your knees come in front of your toes. This feels terrible. Don't do that, please. Okay, so shin bones back, weight is in the heels, inner ankles back, outer ankles down. Get all of this set up intentionally, right? If you have a knee injury, work on it intentionally setting up your feet and your legs before you do anything else. Arms can come up from here. Sit down into it and squeeze the block, right? Activate all those leg muscles. Feel them pulling in, breathe in. Sink deeper if you can. You don't go deeper by putting your knees in front of your toes, okay? If you can't go deeper with your knees back, then stay here and work your thighs, your calves, your glutes. Like, feel those muscles and wake them up. Two more. Inhale. Sit deeper if you can. One more big breath. Chest lifts up and then fold. Keep the block there. Squeeze it. Halfway lift. Take the block out. Step back. High to low plank. Upward facing dog, lift the legs, squeeze the muscles, downward facing dog. Step your right foot into warrior one. So the back foot turns out a little bit, as much as you need to create space here for the front leg to lunge, yeah? Both legs soft in the knee. 
This knee's got a nice deep bend, obviously, but this one here, don't hyperextend, right? It's not a bend in the knee. It's a softening so that that muscle engagement is active. When you lock out the joints, you take a lot of work out of the muscles. Yeah, breathe in. Lunge as deep as you can. Again, the knee never goes in front of the toes or too far in front of the ankle. Keep it above or behind the ankle. Tracking in line with it too, not opening too much to either side. Breathe in. Sink a bit deeper if it's there. One more. Press your feet. Squeeze your inner thighs. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flow it out. Upward facing dog. Lift your thighs. Downward facing dog. Left side. Step forward. Turn your back toes out as much as you need to. Turning them out more might give you space. Turning them in less might give you space. It depends on where there is discomfort in your knee, right? If it's in the inner knee, outer knee, the back, the front, it's going to make a difference. Find your feet. Find your calf muscles, your thigh muscles, and then you descend into the lunge. Keep that knee tracking with the ankle. Breathe in. Press your feet. Squeeze your core. Right? Legs strong. Feel a little bit more lunge in that front leg. Really press down. Pull in. One more big reach up. And then Chaturanga Dandasana. Step back. With control, you lower down. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breath in. Lightly bend the knees. Soften the elbows. And press straight back through the tailbone. Big breath in, big breath out. Again, press down, up onto your toes, bend your knees, step between your hands. Halfway lift and fold. Okay, chair without the block, but same alignment. Yes, yeah, sit down, keep the knees in line with the ankles, reach up, and then fold. Hug into your legs. Halfway lift, long spine. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow it out. Keep your leg muscles, squeeze into the bones. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Right side warrior one, step forward. Reach up, press, squeeze the leg muscles in. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow it out. Breathe, inhale, lift up. Exhale, go back. Other side, warrior one. Press the feet down. Keep the knees. Micro bend in that back leg. Reach. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flow it out. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Full breath in. Full breath out. Ujjayi breath through the nose. Fiery. Powerful breathing. Inhale. Press down your hands and your feet. Pull muscles to bones. Lift up. Bend your knees. Fly to the top of your mat. Land softly. Yeah, flat back. Lengthen on the inhale. Fold. Chair pose. Sink down. Weight into your heels. Lift the chest. And then fold. Hug into your thighs. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Move. Breathe. Upward facing dog. Squeeze your inner thighs. Downward facing dog. Right side warrior one. Ground the feet. Keep that micro bend in the back leg. Reach. Squeeze your leg muscles. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flow it out. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side. Track that front knee with the ankle. You press. You reach. Chaturanga Dandasana. Move with your breath. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in, take a full breath out. Lift your right foot up. Three-legged dog, option into flip dog. Right, as you flip over, really important to get your feet into proper alignment. So feet are parallel, not too wide, right? If your feet go too wide, then you go knock knee. Knees over the feet, lift up through the hips. Press down, every toe mound, inner ankles back, outer ankles ground, lift higher, come to high plank, side plank. Knee can come down, right? So this is a great option. It doesn't feel good to lift up 
or to have both legs straight because maybe it kind of puts a pressure sideways on the knee then puts your bottom knee down. You can still work this top leg. Right? You'll get a lot of work through the outer parts of the leg, which is great for your knee. Lift it up, squeeze it in. If your legs are straight, really focus on your feet staying active. Yeah, so your feet are flexed. Pull your pinky toes towards your face, like really activate the legs a lot. And then from there, lifting up through the hips. So don't dump down and put weird pressure on the knees, right? Feel that straight body lifting the hips, maybe lifting the top leg, feet stay active, core strong, breathe in, chaturanga dandasana, flow, high to low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in, take a full breath out. Lift your left foot up, three-legged dog, into flip dog. Set up your feet, right? You land lightly, feet parallel, toes facing the back of your mat, and then lift through the thighs. Press your shin bones back so your knees don't go in front of your toes. Press up, ground down. Yes, take another breath in. Big lift, high plank, side plank. Option with the knee down, gaze up, lift up. This is my less comfortable knee, so I can put a towel here if I need to do that, right? That's a nice option. So a little extra padding can feel so good. Breathe in, breathe out, lift, expand, find your fullest possible expression. Chaturanga Dandasana on your exhale, flow it out. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Big breath in, big breath out. Step your right foot between your hands, crescent lunge. Okay, so this one can definitely not feel great on the knee. Um, if your knee, like on this side, if it doesn't feel good, if it's not nice lifting it up, you can bring your knee down to the ground, right, which is an option. For some of you, putting your kneecap on the ground might not feel nice. That's where it can be like I just did with a towel. Even a foam block feels nice sometimes for me, right? Like that kind of is in between. So wherever you're going, if you are lifting the back kneecap up, right, you really want to stay active in the leg. So that kneecap is lifting. You feel the engagement of the thigh muscles, the calf muscles, like everything hugging in here. Twist. Keep your front knee tracking over your ankle. Don't let it cave into your pinky toe. Right? As you twist, push your knee out into your elbow, push your elbow into your knee. Really use that leverage in the twist. Inhale, exhale, lengthen, pull and twist. Take one more breath in. Stay for the breath out. Warrior two, open up. Maybe you need to bring your hands down, right? Don't like force transitions in the knee if it doesn't feel good. Use support. Coming up to warrior two. This is one that is like huge for building strength in the leg. This is probably the one I hated the most for a long time. I don't say I love Warrior Two now, but I'm definitely not as angry at it as I used to be. And really, the more you come into this safely, the more you're going to build strength around the joint, okay? So you don't want to let the knee cave in or open up too much. Keeping it behind your ankle can be really great if you've got a knee injury. Never letting it come past the ankle, okay? So you're going to get as like, deep as you can. Take a few more breaths here. Strong core. Strong legs, feet, ground them, thighs, squeeze them, take a breath in, sink a little deeper if you can, extended side angle, use a block here if you need it, yeah, so elbow to your knee is an option, yeah, that doesn't feel good, right, putting that pressure down on top of the knee, so a block under your hand can feel great, it's creating some lift up out of the side body, keep that front knee in a lunge as much as you can, really open the front of the body, Shoulder blades back, breathe in, breathe out, one more, reach up, Chaturanga Dandasana, flow it out. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, step your left foot into crescent lunge. And actually like it might be on um, the opposite side, so like this is my, my, you know, my, my compromised knee let's say, so on this side some days I need to bring my back knee down. Yeah, because it's actually more pressure here, I find, to be in the lunge with my back knee lifted. So this is a great option. Anytime you want to do that. And if you're, again, so now I feel my right knee doesn't feel great. Maybe it doesn't need to be a block. Even just a towel, that little bit of extra padding, that takes it right out, right? That extra kind of squishiness. And then you can twist. You can keep the knee down to twist, right? Just hook the elbows. 
the point of your right elbow and your left knee, draw the shoulders back. And this, this focus on this is a twist, right? So yes, it's great to add that leg activation and put that strength there, but if it doesn't work on one side, maybe one side you bring your knee down and just be okay with the modification. Yeah, your body, your practice, lengthen and twist. One more, breathe, go deeper, warrior two. Hands coming to the floor to help you come up can be huge, right? Straighten the leg as you come up if you have a knee issue, that might help a lot too. Like come up safely and then intentionally set up the pose. Feel it out. On this side, it took me a lot longer to get deep in this pose. Like it took me way longer. And still like I feel my knee, but I can feel the strength of the muscles supporting the pose. Right, and really working, grounding the feet, squeezing inner thighs, core, all those other muscles I've taken years to build strength in. That's what supports me here. The knee only bends. It doesn't have muscles in it, right? That's the support around is the muscles. Breathe in, extended side angle. Come down. Grab your block if you need it. You can't get a stronger knee, right? Your knee is what it is, but you can get stronger in all those muscles around the knee, the stabilizing muscles, the bigger muscles. Like those are where the money is. Those are where, like, there's possibility. Breathe in, breathe out. One more big reach, big opening. Chaturanga Dandasana. Plant your hands and lower down. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come to the top of your mat. We'll take chair twist with a block, okay? So grab something. If you don't have a block, like I said earlier, it can be like a towel folded up. It needs to be pretty firm because you're gonna squeeze into it. Whenever you've got there, something in between your legs, come down into chair pose. Again, keeping so that your knees never go past the toes, preferably over the ankles. Right? You might not sit down as deep, but that's okay. Work the legs and twist. Left elbow to right knee. Focus on knee alignment. Yeah, this left knee wants to pop forward. Draw it back. Legs strong. Feet, inner ankles back, outer ankles down. Feel the four corners of your feet rooting. And twist. Breathe in. And breathe out. Come to center. Squeeze whatever's between your thighs and then twist to the other side. Yeah, feel that activation. Right knee draws back if it tries to pop forward. A couple more. Inhale. Exhale. Lengthen the spine. Deepen your twist. Squeeze your inner thighs and then release. Keep the prop. It's really good. Yeah, so your feet are a little bit wider. If it doesn't work, like if it falls out, then just whatever. But again, feet are about hip distance apart. If you have something there you can squeeze into, do that. Scoop up. Your big toes with your peace fingers. Wiggle your head. The upper body lets go. Lower body works a little bit here, right? So squeeze that prop. Press your tailbone up. A little bit weight into the front of the feet in this pose, yeah? So a little bit more weight forward. Lengthening the backs of the legs. But not locked out. Micro bend in both joints always. Feel the difference, right? Like check in repeatedly. Lock out if you can. Feel that and then feel softness and feel the difference. It's more work a lot of the time, yogis. I get it. Right? Yes, it's more work, but it's such good work. Palms underneath your feet. If you're not already aware of that, like if you have a knee injury or if you have hyperextending knees, a lot of the time like the wrong thing, right, what will cause more injury is actually easy. Like it's easier for me to take my knees and hyperextend them here. If they've got a micro bend, all of a sudden my thighs are working, my calves are working, my glutes are working, I lock out my legs and 80% of that work disappears and it's just pressure in through the joints. So do the work, right, it might not be comfortable like uncomfortable from muscles working is different than uncomfortable from, you know, chronic misalignment or putting your body into a pressure that's not supposed to be there. Like all of those things you want to watch out for. Uncomfortable because your muscles are on fire. That's not a bad thing necessarily. <laughs> take a breath in. Take a breath out. Release your feet. Toe heel them to touch. We'll move into a crow pose. You can use a block as a perch here. Right, I would say crow is definitely available to you if you have a knee injury. You just want to be careful in it, maybe not focusing on lifting up too soon. You want to be with your knees in the backs of your triceps, okay, yogis? So 
the the curl where you do it with like your knees way out on the outside and you're squeezing in, I already feel that without even lifting up how that does not feel good on my knees. So you want to be aware of this, okay? This is a really common misalignment in crow is to come up with the knees like squeezing the outer triceps. It's backs of the triceps or in the armpits even, okay? And from here, it's very different. That's not got a sideways pressure on the joint. And you're in crow, right? Maybe the toes are on the block. Maybe they're lifting up, but keep engaged through core. Keep scissoring inner thighs like they're squeezing, trying to connect, but they can't. Breathe. Lift your tail. Lift your belly button. Take one more breath in and either step or shoot back. Maybe don't shoot back if that's not going to let you land safely for your knees, right? Lower down. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come to the top of your mat. Halfway out. And four. Reach all the way up. Okay, so eagle pose. Eagle is one that can definitely put some strain under it. There's some studios that won't even do eagle pose because it puts a sideways pressure on the joint. So I do it really modified with a block some days if I need it. So what I'm going to do, like options for eagle is that you like would come into a, here, I can, on this side I can do it. So my bad leg, like, you know, my bad leg, this one can actually go into a full bind because this isn't the leg that's putting the pressure, like that, that's standing, right? So this is the option as a full bind, right? There's no way in hell I can do that on this side. If I start to sit down, that knee, there's no way that it can support that, okay? And that's not just a story, that's like truth. That leg, that knee just doesn't have that kind of movement. So what I do is I take a kickstand. So leg up and over, come down. Some days I use the block. Some days I don't, most days I don't. Okay, and then as I come down into this pose, the arms can be there. The arms aren't as important right now, right? We're talking about the legs, but whatever, arm variation. But as I sink down and bend this left knee, like the, the compromised knee, this leg is kind of supporting it. So I'm pushing my right calf into my left knee as I sink down. And that hug in through the inner thighs, hug in through my core, really stabilizing the knee bending. It's not got a sideways pressure that feels gross, okay? So switch sides here. So again, with the toes on the ground, your standing leg, the knee is kind of bending into the back of the front leg, the back of the knee, the back of the calf, and you're resisting that, that isometric. So the bent leg, the left leg here is pressing back into the right kneecap. Sink down. Squeeze inner thighs. Like really keep active through the legs. They need to be working to support the joint here so much. Breathe in. Breathe out. And release. Sweep up. Standing leg raise. So... On the side where my leg is standing, anytime I'm balancing on this leg, you, I really want to make sure that I've got a micro bend in the knee, okay? And it's, I guess it's more work. That work, that leg is working. It's fired up, but that's good work, right? So um, grab onto the right side, open up. Sideways. Lengthen the crown of the head. Keep that leg working. It's working so hard right now. Amazing. Breathe in. I'm just going to turn. Bring your foot back to center. Reach your arms up. Fly back. Airplane pose. The really common mistake here is to start locking out the legs whenever it's like in these standing poses, right? So like to try to hyperextend it, keep a micro bend. Keep the legs long and straight, but not locked out. Breathe in, breathe out. Hands to heart center, half moon. I would really encourage using a block for this. Okay, again, just feeling that stability that it creates to find a little more space. Keep your bottom foot at 12 o'clock. It'll try to turn in maybe on you. Make sure you keep it at 12. Top foot facing to the right side of your mat. Gaze up if you can. Stack the hips. Lift the top leg. Micro bend that bottom knee. Take a big inhale. And then feet together. Fold. Sweep all the way up. Standing leg raise on your left side. So grab the left knee. Open up the pose. Again, micro bend the standing leg. You want to check in. It's a really common default to lock it out, right? And then there I am, locked out, standing on this like solid, rigid leg, and it just it doesn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel stable in the same way. And if you haven't built the strength in the muscles, you might not feel as stable once you micro bend, but that's good work. Feel instability, feel wobble. Back to center. Ground your feet, foot forward, and then fly back, airplane. Like if you get a knee injury, one of the things they know they did for my physiotherapy is put you on one of those balance boards, right? Where you like balance on something unstable. 
right? The purpose of those kind of physio exercises is to activate stabilizing muscles, right? Like the same thing you're doing right here. Hands to heart center, open up, grab your block. If you get to a point where you feel some stability, you can actually balance, like do the standing poses on a foam block and it's gonna, again, make the ground squishy. So you have to work different muscles to stabilize yourself. If you're doing it safely, if you're doing it intentionally, then it's a great way to build strength. Soften that bottom knee, lift the pose higher, big breath in, feet together, fold. Halfway lift, fold forward, and sweep all the way up. Hands over the center into dancer's pose, yeah? Grab the inside of your right foot. Keep that right knee pulling into center. You don't want to let the knee open out to the side. It creates weird pressure sideways, right? No sideways pressure on the joints. Kick straight back. Keep that bottom leg fired up. Lift the thigh muscle up. Squeeze the calf muscle to the bone. Breathe. Squeeze in to go even higher. Kick that back heel straight up. One more breath. Switch sides, dancer, on your left. Pull back into your hands. Chest forward. Breathe. Feel that micro bend in the bottom leg, core engagement, supporting as you lift higher, big breath in, and release. Tree pose. So again, options for your feet, right? Like, yeah, there's inner calf is great. Inner thigh is great. What this does is it puts pressure sideways on the joint, okay? So that's not to say it's bad. If you're doing one of these two options, you need to really be actively thinking about the standing leg pushing back into the foot, yeah? So I'm not just letting my right leg here do all the work and push sideways out through the joint. Definitely like big yoga no-no is to do tree pose with your foot right on the side of the knee because that's of course like extreme sideways pressure. But a kickstand is an option too, right? So this is great stability. And the half lotus variation is another option as well, right? So you can bring the foot to the front of your thigh and focus on that connection, even if it slides down, but ankle and thigh pushing into each other. This is huge for activating muscles around the knee, right? And again, it doesn't feel great, but it's like in a way that's like muscles working, not that it's hurting my knee. Okay, so there's different options there. Any arm variation. We've been here for a few breaths already, so we'll switch sides. Just one more inhale. And then release. So whatever variation, one side might look different than the other, right? But working that, this is an amazing variation for building some strength, but it's definitely like a challenging variation. Again, the foam. So set that up again. Wherever you're going, you find connection between the foot and the leg. Press them into each other. Grow your tree. Breathe. Press down, squeeze in, connect the foot and the leg. One more breath and release. Nicely done. Sweep your arms up. Fold forward. Halfway lift, long spine. Chaturanga Dandasana. Step back, lower down. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, warrior one. Feet, legs. Warrior two, triangle pose, straighten out the legs, okay? This is like, I'm obsessed with this pose as far as knees, okay? So do not hyperextend your knees, please, here. This is a really important um, point in this, in triangle pose, because the common way to do this, like my way of doing it for years was this, okay? This is where I had my breakthrough. I had a teacher that kept coming and poking the back of my knee, right? Reminding me, let there be softness there, right? Fluidity in the joints not rigidity, soften it, ground the feet, squeeze through the inner thigh muscles, gaze up, draw that top shoulder blade back, a gentle twist, really working the legs, the core, feel space and openness, and then come all the way up to stance. Turn your toes in, wide leg hold, again, legs micro bend, okay, do not lock them out. Nice place to bring the blocks if you need to here under your hands, if you can't get all the way to the floor. But just be careful, soften the knees, okay? Keep that and then really press outer edges of the feet, big toe mounds, inner ankles back, 
Feel your thigh muscles, like your inner thighs lifting straight up to the ceiling. Legs are active, fired up. Breathe. Again. Press your feet, lift your tailbone, your inner thighs, really squeezing those leg muscles so the whole one's shaking. Amazing. One more. Come up. Pyramid pose. Toes face the front of your mat. Step your back foot in. And again, wider feet might feel better here. So if you're standing on a tightrope, this can be very unstable on the joints, okay? I mean, that's good. Sometimes unstable is what you're aiming for, to build stability. But if it doesn't feel safe, just take a little bit wider feet. Like one foot's on the right side of the mat, the other foot's a bit closer to the left side of the mat. Yeah, if you have to let it go, you can have hands on blocks, hands to the ground. Just again, feeling out that you're not locking the knees. You're working the legs, grounding the feet. And let go of your head. Breathe in. And breathe out. Halfway lift. Let's just switch sides today, okay? So triangle on the left, step your left foot to the top of your mat, right foot back. If you really want to take a vinyasa flow to get there, go for it. So bringing the blocks to the outside of your foot. I'm just using two because it's a bit more stable, right? Two blocks, I have them here. Why not use them? It can be one block that's on its highest height. The reason for this is that you want to be taking space in the side of the body, okay? So um, a common thing that people do is bring their hand to the front of their leg. And I get that this seems easy and that this is like, well, if you can't get your fingers to the ground, this is the next blessed thing. But what you're doing is often pushing down and causing hyperextension in this leg, okay? You're putting a lot of pressure, your whole upper body weight often dumping into that front thigh or front shin. Just be aware of that. That's where the block takes you out of that, can let you take the micro band, work the muscles more. Just be careful about this, like, pressing down. You want to be, if you're doing this, if this is all you've got, then really lift. That shin bone is pushing back up into the hand, and it's bringing activation to the leg. It's not just a dumping into it, right? Be careful of dumping. A couple more breaths. Reach. Twist. You've pressed into the shin. Press your shin back up into your hand. Feel the activation. Look up. Stay and twist here, and then pull yourself all the way up to stand. Turn your toes in. Bind the hands. This takes a lot more work in the legs, right? Because now my hands don't get to go to the ground to support it. So just be aware of that. Lift your inner thighs up. Let the crown of the head go. Inner thighs up. Feet press down. Shift your weight forward a little bit. Get the legs working a lot, really squeezing. Skin to muscle, muscle to bone. Press. Hold it right here. Okay, come all the way up. Pyramid pose, turn your toes forward. Step your back foot in. You can do this with your bind. If you'd like to, yeah, fold over the front leg. Again, without the hands down, now the legs are working a bit more. So keep that, don't like, lose the focus. Ground your feet. Draw back the right hip bone here. Keep your legs and your hips in a line. Breathe in. Let the upper body go. breath. Hands to your mat. Step back to a high plank. Lower down low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Come into camel pose from here. So come down onto your knees, right? Yeah, so coming down onto your knees, so that might be like the worst thing that you can hear somebody say, right? I know for me it does not feel great. Options, right? So if you've got a towel nearby, this is great, or a blanket, okay? You're gonna set that under your knees, boom, padding, feel like that feels way better for me. If you know camel and you don't have issues in your knee, go right into it, right? Um, if you don't have a towel, let's say you're in a yoga studio one day, those will be open again one day, <laughs> right? So you can just do the folding up of the mat. This is gonna give you like a roughly similar experience. Not quite as cushy, but it's like a triple thickness. It feels much better. So from here, hands in the low back, lift up the chest, breathe in. Out, lift, press your hips forward so your hips are over your knees, your chest lifting, shoulders integrating, breathe in, breathe out, one more big inhale, and release. Okay, so sitting onto your heels, this is a thing that they might cue this in a class after you do camel. I cannot sit on my heels, and again, that's just like 
that's as far as I go where it literally feels like this kneecap is going to explode and it's just not feel nice, right? So options I can do is I can put a block here on my heels. So what I'll normally do and just sit on the block. That feels great, right? So I'm not going into as deep of a knee bend. That's an option. Another option, if you do have the towel or something nearby, you can put this across the back of your knees. So again, depending on what kind of an injury you have, this doesn't help me actually as much, but I know for some people this helps a lot. So just, if that does help, it's better than it not being there. I can't sit my bum all the way down, but that's basically what the towel does is stops that. It doesn't feel quite as stable as the block under my bum, but it definitely feels a lot better than just sitting there with nothing there. So that's an option, okay? And then what you'll do is come down onto your back. Set up your bridge. So bridge pose. You can use a block here if you want underneath your low back. Bridge is an amazing pose for building strength in the legs, okay? So if you just want to get the alignment there, heels underneath your knees, like so where you can graze your heels with your fingertips, right? Get them in close enough, and then lift up. So supported bridge, if you want to block underneath the lower back, you can just kind of let your hips rest on the block, but still, like, the legs can still be really active here, right? Pressing through the feet, pressing down, squeezing thigh muscles. I can still feel my legs a lot working, right? And this, again, anytime you're working your legs, you're building strength that's going to stabilize your joints. Okay, and if you want a full expression, really getting into the triceps grounding, keep up lifting through the hips. Press your feet and work the muscles of your legs, like fire up, skin to muscle, muscle to bone. You press down, you lift high, and then come all the way down. Knees from side to side. So wheel, and even in bridge, I could have mentioned just in bridge, the placement of your feet. Some people do need to turn their feet out a little bit to create space in the knees for a back bend, okay? So, um, or turning them in. And it's really, again, I don't like to say anything is good or bad. If you turn your feet out and when you go up into wheel all the time, it feels like there's gross pressure in your knees, then maybe you shouldn't be turning your feet out, right? But some people taking the feet parallel, I know I've had feedback from students that it just, there's no space, like the knees don't feel good. So wherever you're going, bridge or wheel, set your feet up parallel to start, see what happens, right? That's where I would go and then go up from here. And then from there, really feel out your feet, inner ankles back, outer ankles down, wake up legs, wake up calves, thighs, glutes, like full body here, press down, lift up, take one more breath in, and release, tuck your chin slowly, don't let your knees go way out or cave in, keep them strong as you come down, right? If you have knee issues, you want to be very focused on keeping your legs engaged, not like fixated and worrying about something happening, but just like always working those leg muscles so you're building strength and stability. Go up one more, back bend, bridge your wheel, set up your feet, set up your hands, intentional foundation, and then you go up, find a big expression right here for three breaths. Inhale, press your feet. I find sometimes coming on my toes feels nice on my knees, some days it doesn't, right? Feel that, maybe that relieves some pressure for you. Lift up a little more, and then come down. Supta Baddha Konasana. This actually is a place you can bring in some blocks too. So for some people, again, it depends on the knee injury. If you put your feet together and open your legs like in Supta Baddha Konasana, this is again a sideways pressure a little bit on the knee, right? So what you can do here is just take blocks with the outer thighs or even, again, two rolled up bath towels. If you have the props, use them. It feels really nice. Just kind of supporting. Right hand on your belly, left hand on your heart. with where you can incorporate a prop. All of a sudden, a pose that you just thought you couldn't do, there might be space for you to, to start getting curious about it, right? Like maybe you can't all of a sudden go right into it, but if you throw a prop in or suddenly engage a muscle that you weren't focused on before, like now the pose starts to evolve little bit by little bit. I definitely did not think I'd be able to do wheel for very long ever when I started this practice or like like the um, pigeon poses and stuff like that, they were agonizing at first. And it's just like getting into um, building leg strength. It's going to make a big difference. A few more breaths here. Scan your body. And just let go of some of that tension. In. And out. And then again. chest, 
just like to squeeze. Press your feet up to the ceiling. Leg lowers are great, right? This is working some leg core strength. Of course, we want that. Amazing. Hands underneath the low back. Support your tailbone. Take a breath in. Press your heels up. Big toes are touching. Legs are active. They're not locked out, right? But they're straight and strong. Lower down a third. Breathe in. Lower down a third. Skin to muscle. Muscle to bone. Activate your legs. Squeeze them. One inch off the mat. Look at your toes. Point your toes. Little flutter kick. Don't just feel the legs moving, but feel that muscles active for five, four, three, two, and one. Feet flex. Slowly lift your feet up. Lower down a third. Breathe in. Down a third. Flex. Activate. Press heels forward. Down another third. To the floor. Look at your toes. Do a scissor kick from side to side for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, squeezing inner thighs, legs, 4, 3, 2, and 1, feet together, lift your feet up, lower down a third, last one, I feel my legs, yes, work the leg muscles, feel them, pulling in, down a third, take a breath in, one inch off the mat, look at your toes, flex your pinky toes towards your face, make little circles here for 5, 4, Three legs are strong and go the other direction. Last five, four, three belly muscles pulling into and one hug your knees into your chest. And feel that. So as far as a hip pose is concerned, um, reclined pigeon or thread the needle might feel nice for you. Okay, so in it with a knee injury, flipping over and putting that weight of gravity onto your joint might not feel good. Um, I'll demo in a second, but just giving... First, the option on your back, so thread the needle, even just right here, this is a hip opener with your left foot on the ground, right ankle on your left knee, and you can start to open through the right knee. Thread the needle, you reach through and draw in, right, a reclined pigeon is here. I did a pigeon practice a few weeks ago, and I do talk about some options there for the knees as well, so you can check that out, it's a nice gentle flow. Or half pigeon, right, if you're coming into half pigeon, using a block to support your hip can be huge, and just bringing the heel closer to the groin a lot so you know ideally you would have your shin parallel if you bring your foot in a bit closer it does take some pressure out of the knee and a block there helps a little bit as well and then just rest into it breathe anything that you do if it doesn't feel good on the knee specifically on the knee then just make sure that you bring your hip a little bit so if you take less pressure or less focus to relieve joint tension, joint pressure, put the tension in the muscles. And just using your breath, channel it to that spot. Any feelings are speaking to you when you breathe there, send oxygen, send energy, and you need support. Take a couple more breaths. And settle in as deep as you can into your stretch. Switch sides, half pigeon or reclined pigeon or thread the needle on your left. You can flow through or just switch your legs. Okay, so this is my side where I'm a bit more tight, so I really do take a much bigger bend in my front knee here. This alleviates the pressure out of that leg. Come down into it, right? Find the right amount of bend for your leg, your joint. want again strength building right it doesn't always have to be like that you're being careful and like not working you can curl the back toes under and lift that back kneecap up this is going to work your whole leg and your core it can be a great way again to build some strength just feel it out if, it, if this puts pressure in the front knee that doesn't feel good don't do it but if you can do this right here i just feel like i'm working my back leg muscles which is not a bad thing 
if you want restoration, you let things come down. You settle in. breath in, full breath out, come up to sit, sweep both legs out in front of you, take stock pose and then a fold pose, so stock pose is great, I love this pose, it's one that we don't do that often, but it's a great way to build strength up, it's a whole body pose, right, it looks like I'm just kind of sitting here, but it's about how much you activate it, so as far as the legs, really pressing the backs of the heels down, just to where your kneecaps kind of lift, a or sorry, the backs of your knees lift a little bit up off the ground, and working the muscles. So if, which you can actually do here too, just to, this is something you can just do to build strength in your legs. I don't think I've actually mentioned this in the workshop. It's just if you put something, a little something underneath your knees, a rolled up towel, and then hands by your hips, you press the floor with your hands. So like the upper body, you're lifting the crown of the head, shoulder integration, all that's good stuff. But then here, press the backs of your heels and the backs of your knees down into the floor, yeah? So the kneecaps press down, backs of the knees into the towel. You might, you need this, the reason you put this here is so you're not hyperextending, right? It keeps the knees in a little tiny micro bend. And just, you can like literally sit there and watch TV and do this. You'll feel, you're like, I feel my legs, I feel my glutes, full body working. Press, activate, right? It's isometric. I don't have to be moving to feel my muscles working. This is on fire from my toes all the way up to the crown of my head. Well, my crown of my head's not working very much, but squeeze. Press the kneecaps down, ground the backs of the heels, big breath, and release, let it go. Nice. Move into a fold here. You can actually keep that under your knees for the fold, right? So um, a really a good thing to, to relieve some pressure in a forward fold is just to take a micro bend in the knees. And again, sit bones maybe come back here. If you didn't already, fold forward. You can be pressing the heels forward and kind of grounding through the backs of the knees. If you have something rolled up under your knees, it's great because you can press down and be working, building strength in the legs. Tuck your chin, lengthen your neck. Breathe in, breathe out. One more. Move into an inversion, come down onto your back. Waterfall, shoulder stands. So with waterfall, just put the block underneath your back. This is really nice. This is actually, I really prefer this some days because it just lets my legs, I don't know, I can't even explain what happens when I'm in this pose. I don't know, maybe if anyone out there can comment and tell me what's happening. But like, I just feel this whole joint realigns itself the longer I'm upside down like this. Literally, it's like I can feel the inflammation draining out of my knee. Not completely by any means, right? But it definitely feels really good. It's lovely, it's like clicking feeling where the joint feels like it's dropping into alignment whenever I do um, any of these poses and feel the air. So waterfall, you're just resting here. Sleeping bare, the arms can be involved. Shoulders stay grounded, but the arms reach up. Or your shoulder stand or your head stand, whatever feels good today. It's like legs up a wall, that's another one. You can just kind of like lie there watching TV with your legs up a wall, right? And just allowing for that, you know, it's a lymphatic drainage. You know, the, the yogis say that there's like a drainage of the, you know, the blood out of your limbs and then oxygenated blood rushes back whenever you come out of the pose. All I know is it feels great. Waterfall with me, just 
bend your knees, let your knees stay over your ankles. Oh, sorry, no. Knees over your hips, let your ankles kind of turn out a little, your toes, your arms can come down. And bring your feet down to your mat. Remove the block if it's there. And you'll straighten out both of your legs. Square your hips to the center of your mat and then draw your right knee into your chest. Supine twist, right knee in, and then right knee across the body here. Keep your shoulders grounded down. And that bottom leg, be aware, mine was just hyperextending a little bit, soften it. My body goes into hyperextension whether I want it to or not sometimes. Like I'll find that I might be a few breaths into the pose and realize, oh yeah. Exactly what I say not to do, right? Exactly what I know doesn't feel good in my body, and then I fix it. It's not like it's a big deal. When you catch it, you fix it. Old habits that might be there, do the left side now. Supine twist, left knee in, center your hips first. Like old habits might have been there for a long time, right? You might have, like, I hyperextended my knees for years as a chef, like standing all day on my, you know, working on my feet. And it was just a thing I did to, to keep my legs feeling like not painful. I, you know, I thought that I was doing it to, to prevent pain, but. The, the more I learned and the less I hyperextended, the more I started to get strong and there really was actually less pain that way. Come back to center. Give your knees one squeeze. Hug in tight and Shavasana. One last option here, supported Shavasana. You just put blocks into the backs of the thighs or that rolled up towel if you have it. It's just something to take a little bend in the knees again. And just rest right here. If this makes your feet roll out, if that doesn't feel good, then you know, don't do it or, or put a focus on the toes facing straight up if you need to. But it's mostly letting your openness here surrender. Take a nice gentle breath. Take a full body stretch, reach up over your head, lengthen, point your toes, and you'll roll onto your right side. Remove the blocks if they're there in the way. Just rest on your side for a moment. If it doesn't feel nice to be on your side with your knees like this, you can put a towel there or a block between your thighs. Sometimes my knees sitting on top of each other doesn't feel great. You can come up to a seated position. Just keep your eyes closed, sit up tall. Hands at your heart center. We'll finish with one ohm together. Take a breath in. Thumbs to the center of your forehead. And together we bow and we say, Namaste. Thank you, yogis. I really hope that that helped bring some attention to your knees. Um, Please comment below if that, like anything that worked, anything that didn't work. Again, I know that everybody um, like ha might have a different injury than what I have. So just acknowledge that when your body has something like that that's trying to tell you something, it doesn't mean you can't do something. It just means you have to maybe get creative and get curious about how you can do it, okay? So keep um, moving your body, keep nourishing your body, stay connected to your yoga mat, and please subscribe, 
like this, share this with anybody that might have um, some issues with their knees and their yoga practice, and I will see you again really soon.